Go. really good but I must get back to work um, I could stay in there all day but let's speak to Toby the, the head the brewmaster for brewery Uberquell in Hamburg in Germany Hello, how are you doing Toby how's it going how are you doing <laughs> fine fine yourself this original Heller's Lager is just absolutely terrific it really is really really good beer thank you um, but we're in the brew house um, we're currently on a mash rest so Toby's got a little bit of time to talk to us today. I like to do these brewery tours in very kind of basic speech. Some of you out there, you know your beer inside out. You know your breweries out inside out. But then there's some of you who you're new to beer. So I, come, I like to come across and I like to explain and I like to talk to brewers in that kind of new to beer language, if you like. So. Toby, I've just walked into your brewery. Uh, where do we start? Where, where do we? Where do we? Where does it all begin? Uh, actually, it begins at the fields with growing the yeah. barley, but we don't have it here. So yeah. now let's let's start at the mill where we put the malts in. I, I just loaded the hopper. Um, so bags of malt get thrown in. And so you have the well, the grist bill, uh, depending on what kind of beer you brew. Yeah. Uh, roasted malts for darker beers or uh, caramel malts for heavier beers for a lot of body or uh, in this case it's going to be a uh, pale ale, the yeah. palimpalim pale ale and um, so it's pretty balanced so it's not too much on the heavy side uh, so you know the, the, the drinkability. <laughs> it's, it's terrific. It's terrific. So, so basically what we have here yes. ah, yeah. We have the raw materials. Is this is the raw material? So basically, all Toby is looking to do is to grab as much sugar out of that as possible and add a little bit of flavour. But but essentially, it's mainly to do with the sugars to, to draw it out of. Yeah. The, so um, the malt. we we start here with the with the malt, and um, then below there is the mill. It's gonna be it's, it's getting milled. Yeah. Transported over there uh, to the the mesh tun where it's mixed with the brewing water and then uh, the whole journey begins with, you know, it's an enzymatic process. The enzymes that are already in the malt um, break down the starch to fermentable and unfermentable sugar. So depending on what temperatures you uh, you have the rests or the, the ramps and how, how much they're going to take or the pH value. So there you can say, okay, the beer, it's going to be uh, uh, very sleek or spritzy or whatever you want to call it or a light beer, light bodied beer yeah. or a heavy beer with a lot of residual sugars like you would like to have in a, in a stout for example you're going to have a different mashing uh, program Fantastic, so then you're grabbing again, you're boiling the, you know, you, 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 you're soaking the malt in there and then you, you're kind of sending it over then to a boil where you boil the beer, that gets rid of any kind of bacteria. We yeah, have first the, the lauter. Yeah. Um, the, um, it's like a filter, so a solid liquid separation process. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the liquid that comes out, that's the wort. That's uh, the wort. It's like yeah. a malt yeah. sugar. Uh, yeah. and, and then it comes to boiling. And this is where we start yeah. to well, deactivate enzymes sterilize the work that you don't have any microorganisms in there. Yeah. Um, of course the, the protein it's denaturalized. Um, and of course our good friend Mr. Hops. Yeah. <laughs> it's, oh. it's added there. So these are the hops? Yeah, it's some hops. So these pellets. are the pellets. These are the hops pellets and I always I tell you what I like, I love you know it's like getting a flower and kind of kind of Depends breaking breaking this up and and really rubbing it rubbing it in your hands and, ah just wonderful yeah absolutely wonderful don't ask me what kind of hops this is right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's hops that goes in beer that's what we know yeah fabulous fabulous so then once once the hops are running with a boil that kind of flavors the beer and years ago it would have been used as um, like, like, not a medical, but it would have 
kind of flavoured and preserved the beer, wouldn't it? Years, years, yeah, years. yeah, it's, it's, it's like a preservative, an, a natural an antibacterial. Yeah, um, yeah. And of course, yeah, it preserves because also the polyphenols out of the hops they um, also bind the, some some protein, and protein is always you know long term. It's it's not too good to have too much of it in the beer, and it also takes out some of the, the protein and of course the, the bittering effect from, yeah. from the hops and have it also. And then with all the new brews uh, and with the new blends and, and, and breedings uh, you have the, all the aroma hops or the flavor hops to have proper fruit flavor without any fruits. And then it goes into the fermenters. You have some inside fermenters, what have we got? One, two, three, four. four. Four inside fermenters. So basically, again, in common speech, if there's any sediment left, the sediment falls down below the line of, of where they pull it from, which you probably connect the hose. Uh, you start from the bottom. So start from the bottom. Ah, right, okay. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 yeah, these, these are the fermenters. So, how does this process work, uh, Toby? Uh, well, de depending on what kind of yeast you use, uh, bottom fermenting or top fermenting, the top fermenting, uh, they prefer higher temperatures, up to 20 degrees C or, or even higher. Yeah. Uh, like some Norwegian yeast strains, they go up to 40 degrees C. Kvicks. Yeah. The quack, yeah. yeah, and yeah. Or the um, bottom fermenting, we are around 10 to 12 degrees C. And then the, the main fermentation takes from three days in a pale ale, uh, for example, our Pilsen uh, takes for 10 days, mm. um, so it, it takes its time, yeah. And then you have, of course, the, the maturation process, which takes another two, three, up to four weeks, depending on what, what you want and what you're aiming for. And that happens in these, these, these vessels, yeah? Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. They're insulated, you have um, glycol cooling, uh, chilled, permanently controlled, yeah. Un yeah. under pressure, and well, you also have the carbonization process going in here, yeah. so we use the, the carbon dioxide that it's produced during the fermentation to carbonate itself, and you've seen it different in other countries. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, we are not allowed to do that, uh, or just in case if the carbon dioxide comes from a fermentation, then you could... Um, how, how they call it? Um, force carbonation. Force carbonated, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not a fan. It takes I out a lot of aroma. Massive, massive. I'm not a fan at all. I much prefer a normal, um, a, a normal process for my beer, a natural process for my beer. And just finally, oh, I suppose we could we could talk about the bottling and stuff. So, so here, here's the bottling line. Well, nice uh, automated you, system here. You, you see that we don't have too much space, um, so yeah. we, we have this little mobile filler, uh, filler, and I mean it works pretty well. You, you yeah, can do up to, up to three pallets per day, depending on, on your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and then is this where you fill the cage or is this storage? It, this is just, we have the, uh, the steam, uh, generator in there, the, the water treatment and compressor. And so where do you fill the kegs? Is it here? Uh, by hand, um, directly at the from the tank. We don't have a machine for it, so you okay. just you just put the connector uh, in the hose and, and there you go. Fill it up, fill it up. And one last thing, we got these wonderful outside fermenters, which where we started the video. <laughs> These, these, I mean, you can see these from the road. It's a massive advertisement yeah. for the brewery, it really is. Um, this is drawing people in from the road, isn't it? You've got yeah, the busy yeah. road there, people thinking they can see, they can smell pizza, they can they can see beer being brewed. Yeah, this this is just terrific, terrific, terrific. This many, many people stop by just to see what's going on here with yeah, all the, the colored tanks, and then, then they see, okay, there's a brewery. Yeah, yeah. And there's, like a, like a beer garden and, uh, and the, of course a, a and then pizzeria. They come, and, in, and in they come. Toby, it's been absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> um, 
I put it through in a in a in a in a very kind of basic way. Um, but this was a look at Uberquell Brewery in Hamburg in Germany. If you're having in Hamburg, you got to come here for a pint. Please. Cheers. <laughs>